Hi, welcome back. My name is Alice Chen, and today I'm going to be talking about a really important concept in chemistry, aka the Vesper theory. So let's jump right into it. Vesper stands for the valence shell electron pair repulsion. And that sounds like a bunch of words just jambled together, but the basic idea is that you only look at the valence electrons and you can predict the shape of any molecule. Now remember from previous videos that a molecule is a uh, chemically bonded mixture of, of uh, atoms. So um, they have different kinds, different numbers of bonds and different numbers of lone pairs. And the way that those are all arranged in a molecule can sort of tell you what the molecule should look like. And the basic idea here is that when you have a bunch of different atoms and lone pairs within the same molecule, the those are going to try to repel each other as much as possible. So electrons and bonds, they want to get as much personal space as they can. So you have very, very predictable shapes. And a really important concept here is the steric number. And the steric number is basically the total number of pairs of lone electrons, so lone pairs of electrons, which means that those electrons are not bonded to any other atoms in that molecule, and the number of bonds. So whenever you're looking at a single atom in a molecule, the number of lone pairs of electrons and the number of total bonds will tell you the steric number, and the steric number will indicate what shape you should look at. So once you get the steric number, you need to pay attention to the difference between molecular shape and electron geometry. And this is really easy to get confused because they're based on the same thing, the steric number. But the molecular shape is the shape of the actual molecule. So lone pairs, actually, you don't really see them. They're just sort of there, um, orbiting whatever it is that they're orbiting and they don't actually um, show up when you look at them, but they do affect the actual shape of the molecule. So um, when we're talking about molecular shape, we're talking about you can't see the lone electrons. Okay, so this changes with the number of lone electron pairs. By contrast, the electron geometry stays the same for all the steric numbers, and uh, basically, it depends on what the molecule is and what and the number of lone electron pairs that there are. And as we get into the actual example, you'll sort of see the difference and why I especially point that out. And yeah, so the difference again, the number of uh, whether you have pairs or uh, lone pairs of electrons or bonds, and that will tell you the difference between the molecular shape and the electron geometry. Okay, so this is a Vesper chart. You can actually see this basically anywhere. You can find it through Google, you can find it in all chemistry tech textbooks. So um, this is just one that I thought uh, was very, very basic, very simple, very easy to read. Um, and here on the left, you can see the Vesper number. It's called the Vesper number here, but this is basically the steric number. And then you can see the uh, molecular geometries based on the number of unbonded electron pairs here. So we have zero unbonded electron pairs and then all the way to, in this case, four. All right, so let's get into the actual examples. When you have two bonds or two lone pairs, uh, your steric number is 2. So that is a really, really super simple way to calculate the steric number. And the general formula is ax squared. So I put ax squared just so you know that we're focusing on A. And as we see more complicated molecules, you'll kind of see why I have to point that out. Um, okay, and here uh, we don't have any lone pairs, otherwise it would just be a molecule. Or just two mol or two atoms stuck together, um, but both the molecular shape and the electron geometry here are linear, and the degree 
is 180 degrees. So it's very, very simple. You just have um, something up and down. And I have my little nice little model here. It really helps to have a physical model. Um, so I have my little uh, pin and uh, erasers. So you just have um, A in the middle with the two X's on the sides. Okay, and then you can have one lone pair, and that's kind of what it looks like there. Okay, so when you're talking about three bonds, you are talking about the steric number of three. And this is going to be AX3 with your electron geometry. Remember, your electron geometry takes into account your number of electron lone pairs, and that doesn't change with the number of uh, lone pairs. So for the same steric number, it's exactly the same. And for all of these, it is trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. And basically that means um, a triangle on a plane, on the same plane. Um, so we have the uh, the figure from the original chart and then I also have a sort of larger figure here where um, you can see the center is the A which is whatever atom that we're looking at and then on all three sides we have the X so whatever bond is is there and then um, if you have one pair of lone electrons, so that's what I uh, mean when I have the two dots here. So a pair of lone electrons, it looks bent. Your molecule looks bent. So um, when you have electron pairs, it actually rep repels the other atoms and the bonds a little bit more. So the electron pairs sort of are a little more wild. They need a little more room. And so the, um, the angle between them is just a tiny bit larger. And so that is the uh, 119. And then you have just linear if, you know, all of them are lone pairs of electrons. Um, so what it kind of looks like is this. So we have, um, this is the bent configuration. So we have A in the middle and then the two uh, needles here on the side. And then if we have another bond here, we just stick it on there. So everything is flat. You can see that it's basically flat. Now my model's not super perfect because um, I'm just putting it together as I'm talking. But uh, you can see that everything's flat and you just have kind of three spokes of the wheel coming out of the center. All right, so now uh, with four bonds and four lone pairs, AKA steric number four, we actually start to get a 3D feel, a 3D model here. Um, because there are no more, actually because the angle is smaller if we start to get that 3D shape. The electron geometry here is tetrahedral and for the tetrahedral uh, you can actually see um, that we have four molecules, four atoms here, four bonds um, on the central atom and the angle between everything is 109.5 109.5 and I did not draw it on this uh, but you can see here on the graphic that we have sort of the thick wedge and the lined wedge and this basically is just notation to help someone understand what they're looking at in terms of like the 3d shape so when you have the thick edge like you do here the thick wedge means that that atom or that bond comes out towards you. So it comes out towards you. And then the striped bond goes back towards whatever you're looking at. So that can help you visualize exactly what this um, molecule looks like. And then if we have one lone pair, then we basically have a trigonal pyramidal molecular shape and again because the lone electron pair needs just a little bit more room you have a smaller angle between the remaining atoms or the remaining bonds and then if you have two pairs of electrons you have an even smaller angle and um 
and a bent configuration. So just like what we saw uh, before with the, uh, the other steric numbers. Um, okay, and for this one, it sort of looks like this. So this can help you see it a little bit. But essentially, I'm holding on to this needle at the very uh, on the very top, and then on the bottom, it just sort of looks like a pyramid, a three-legged pyramid, um, where you have like something coming out on all sides. And so this can help you sort of visualize what uh, the four bonds looks like. Okay, hope you can see that through the camera. All right, so let's move on. Uh, for the five bonds slash five lone pairs, steric number five, um, you have A, again, in the middle, and then five X. So X, again, can signify anything. The electron geometry here is trigonal pyramidal, and you can see the, I've included the graphic here in the same place. Um, and I do show the um, 3D effect here in my model. Um, but here for the uh, molecular shape, it, again, it's trigonal pyramidal if there are no um, lone electron pairs at all. And this is a little bit difficult to understand if you're seeing this for the first time, if you're trying to imagine what it looks like. So I'm trying to put together the... Uh, model really quick um, just so you can see it before we move on. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Basically, we have one needle, one atom at the very top, one at the very bottom. So these two make up uh, basically a straight line. And then coming out in the middle, we have just three prongs that come out straight through the middle. So this is um, a little bit easier to understand if you have a model. So basically like this, you can imagine, you know, a uh, water wheel or something like that that sort of looks like this. But basically, um, I think this can help you understand what it sort of looks like. Okay. And then uh, here, if you have one electron lone pair, you have a seesaw. So back to uh, this model that I have, if I take away one of the bonds, you can see that you can turn this and the two prongs that sort of come out make, a, uh, make the stand. And then the original two uh, atoms that made the straight line are here and they make a seesaw. So this is why this uh, shape is called a seesaw. Uh, and then the next one is T-shaped. So you can see if you remove one of the legs of a seesaw, then you have a T-shape. You have a T-shape here. And then if you remove that one, then you just get linear. So for here, the angles are, there are so, so many angles, um, but they don't change that much um, and they're actually very very pre predictable so from the, um, in that uh, first trigonal pyra bipyramidal shape that you have and it's called that because um, the shape actually looks like two pyramids on top of each other uh, but it's it's uh, all the angles are very, very easy to guess because they're 90 degree angles, 180 degree angles, 120 degree angles. Like it's, it's all very, very standard. Okay. Um, and the last uh, thing that I'm going to cover here is uh, six bonds slash lone pairs or a steric number of six. And here it actually basically looks exactly the same as the trigonal bipyramidal that we had before, but the octahedral uh, just has an, sort of an extra leg in the middle. So again, we have the core here, and then um, around it, we have the four prongs sticking out in every which way. And then here we have the molecular... Uh, shape being a square pyramidal. So here, if you remove one of the bonds and replace it with an electron pair, 
uh, then you just get a square pyramid. Okay, so, uh, all right, I have this put together, and here, the octahedral, it, it looks a lot, um, very, very similar to the trigonal bipyramidal, um, but you have four prongs here instead of the three from earlier, okay? So this is what it looks like. And it really helps if you have a molecular uh, set, um, one of those kits that you can put together. Um, and then here, if you take away one of these, you are left with a square pyramid. So here, I'm holding on to this top bond. You have the bottom as a pyramid. So just four prongs sticking out and one on top. So this is the square pyramid. And then you have a square planar. So if you have another electron pair, you basically remove this top and the electron pairs are up and down. And then at the base, you have the four wheeled sort of pinwheel thing that you can turn around and hope it looks very pretty like a pinwheel. And then the next ones are T-shaped and linear. So you can see uh, the T-shaped and linear are exactly the same as the ones with a steric number five. All right, so that's it. It's a little bit confusing at first, but if you don't really have a solid grasp or if you still have questions about it, um, feel free to rewind, rewatch this video. It might take a couple watches to really fully understand what exactly all of this Vesper stuff is. Um, so I hope this video really helped you out. If it did, please leave a, a comment in the uh, comment box below. I will definitely read it and respond to you. If you have a topic that you really want me to talk about, also leave it in the comment box below. I will hopefully get to it. And if you want all of my slides and bonus materials for free, um, you can go to this link. I will include it also in the comment box below. And all you have to do is just go there and you can see all the slides I've ever created, all the bonus materials that I have and that I will ever, ever make. Um, so feel free to go there and check it out. And in the meantime, uh, I have some more videos over that way. Please check them out, and I hope you have a really great day.